over one million marine creatures, along with countless birds and land animals, lose their lives each year because of plastic waste. What's most shocking is that the majority of this destruction comes from the things we casually use every single day, like the plastic bottle you might be holding right now. It may look simple, but the story behind how it's made and where it ends up is far more complex than most of us realize. The journey of a single plastic bottle begins deep underground, long before it ever reaches your hands. To create it, we drill for crude oil and natural gas, fossil resources that took millions of years to form. When ancient marine organisms and plants died, their remains sank into ocean beds or were buried beneath layers of soil and rock. Over unimaginable stretches of time, pressure and heat transformed that organic matter into the oil and gas we now extract to power our world and manufacture everyday items. But among all those items, plastic bottles remain one of the most common. To reach these fossil resources, towering drilling rigs are built, some rising as tall as a 30-story building. Offshore rigs push drill bits through layers of rock and sediment, sometimes thousands of feet deep, to tap hidden reservoirs of oil. Once crude oil and gas are pumped out, pipelines send them to refineries. Inside these massive facilities, oil is heated to over 600 degrees Fahrenheit in giant distillation towers. These columns, which can stretch 200 feet into the air, separate crude oil into its many components. One of those components is naphtha, a light hydrocarbon mixture and the essential building block of plastics. Although only about 4% of the world's crude oil is used for plastics, that small fraction has transformed modern life. From packaging and clothing fibers to electronics and medical equipment, plastics have become indispensable, and it all starts with naphtha. Naphtha undergoes a process called cracking, exposed to extreme heat, sometimes hotter than 1,400 degrees Fahrenheit. It breaks down into smaller molecules called monomers. Ethylene and propylene are among the most important of these, as they form the backbone of common plastics, like PT used for bottles, PT used for films and wraps, and PT used for caps and containers. These monomers are purified, and then sent to undergo polymerization, where individual molecules link together into long chains called polymers. This is the stage where chemistry becomes industry, turning invisible molecules into solid usable plastic. After polymerization, the substance is cooled and shaped into uniform pellets called nurdles. These small rice-sized beads may look harmless, but they are the starting point of the entire plastics industry. Every year millions of tons of nurdles are produced, packed into giant sacks, and shipped around the world to be melted and shaped into the objects we use daily. But nurdles themselves are an environmental hazard. Spills during transport often leak into rivers and oceans, where they persist indefinitely and harm marine ecosystems. At this stage, manufacturers add special chemicals to the plastic heat stabilizers, UV blockers, colorants, and strengthening agents that tailor the material to its intended use. From here nurdles are melted and molded into countless products, most commonly, the water bottle. But here's where the story takes a darker turn. A single bottle might be used for only a few minutes before being discarded, yet it can take up to 450 years to fully decompose, and the reality is alarming. Only about 9% of plastic bottles worldwide are recycled. The rest are burned buried in landfills or lost to oceans. Over time, they fragment into microplastics so small they enter the food chain, absorbed by fish, eaten by birds, and ultimately landing on our dinner plates. That convenience of a quick sip leaves behind a legacy that can last for centuries. On the brighter side, recycling does offer a second chance for plastic bottles. If collected and processed properly, a discarded bottle can be reborn into something entirely new. Sports brands like Adidas and Nike transform about 10 used PT bottles into a single jersey. Recycled bottles can also become backpacks, carpets, or even insulation. The potential is enormous, but it relies on us to ensure bottles make it to recycling facilities instead of the environment. The life cycle of a plastic bottle shows us two very different paths. One leads to pollution, microplastics, and long-lasting damage to ecosystems. The other leads to renewal, sustainability, and innovation. The choice of which path a bottle takes doesn't happen in a factory, it happens in our hands, at the moment we decide whether to throw it away, recycle it, or find another use for it. From something as small as a plastic pellet begins the incredible journey of a bottle that will one day sit on a supermarket shelf or in your hand on a hot afternoon. But how does a simple piece of raw plastic transform into a durable, lightweight, and perfectly shaped bottle? 
The process is far more complex and fascinating than it seems. It starts with uniform plastic pellets, which go through rigorous quality checks before entering the shaping stage. Heated to nearly 500 degrees Fahrenheit, these pellets melt into a thick liquid that's forced into molds. The result preforms short test tube-like pieces with thick walls and a threaded neck. Though they look simple, preforms are precisely engineered to withstand heat, pressure, and transport without deforming. They're the blueprints of every bottle, carefully measured to ensure consistent weight, strength, and durability. Factories often produce preforms in bulk because they're compact and easy to transport, leaving beverage companies to blow them into bottles closer to the point of sale. Now comes the transformation. Each preform is heated just enough to become flexible without losing structure. Then, a burst of high-pressure air is injected through the neck, expanding the walls outward until they tightly press against a precision-crafted metal mold. In a matter of seconds, a 4-inch preform can stretch to more than four times its size, perfectly shaped into a bottle. This process, blow molding, is one of the most automated and tightly controlled stages of production. Sensors track every detail, wall thickness, neck threading, and even the smoothness of the surface. Thousands of bottles can be produced in mere seconds with astonishing accuracy, but at this stage, the plastic is still dangerously hot. If not cooled properly, bottles could warp, bulge, or even crack. That's why factories move bottles straight into cooling systems using chilled air or circulating water. Within five seconds, a bottle hardens into its final form, gaining the strength to be stacked, labeled, and transported. Some factories even recycle the heat released during cooling to save energy, making the process more efficient. Once hardened, bottles undergo strict inspections. High-speed cameras powered by artificial intelligence scan thousands of bottles per minute, detecting flaws invisible to the human eye. Any bottle with cracks, deformations, or imperfections is removed instantly. The rest move forward to packaging, grouped into cartons or wrapped in film depending on client needs. Some companies ship bottles empty, while others clean, cap, and prepare them for immediate use. Yet this is only one part of the story. After a bottle leaves the factory, it faces another journey, one that decides whether it helps or harms the planet. Most bottles are used only once, discarded within hours. In nature though, they can linger for more than four centuries before breaking down. That's why recycling is critical. In the United States alone, recycling plants process more than 1.8 billion pounds of pet bottles each year. And yet, that's just 30% of the total produced. Millions still end up in landfills or floating in oceans. When bottles are recycled, they're cleaned, stripped of labels and caps, then compressed into bales. At specialized facilities, they're shredded, melted, and turned back into pellets. These recycled pellets can re-enter the bottle-making cycle or be transformed into something entirely different, from textiles and sneakers to construction materials. In fact, recycled PET uses up to 60% less energy than producing plastic from scratch, reducing CO2 emissions while giving new life to old products. So next time you hold a bottle of water or soda, remember its journey. From a tiny pellet to a perfectly shaped container, it embodies the precision of modern technology. But once it's in your hand, the responsibility shifts to you. Every bottle can either become part of a sustainable cycle or linger as a burden on the environment for centuries. If you enjoyed this deep dive into the hidden world of manufacturing, don't forget to like this video, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe for more fascinating stories of how everyday products are made. The journey doesn't end here, and neither should our curiosity.